Shalom. We're moving on today with the Hebrew alphabet, two letters at a time. Be sure and get your font chart. Today our first letter is the first letter. It is Aleph, silent. We're only going to hear the vowel that goes with it. It is the value number it is a number value one, and its picture meaning is an ox or the strong one. Our other letter today is the final form of the mem. It uh, has a square kind of shape. We'll see what that means in a minute. And so its number value is the same as the regular mem, 40, and the picture meaning is water. So here are three different fonts with the regular mem. You see the regular mem has the opening at the bottom. And the final mem, the mem sofit, is closed all the way around. Now here are three fonts, including the samich, which we learned very much earlier, uh, compared to the mem. And so you see that the samich is much rounder, and the mem is going to have square parts at the bottom. So together, these two letters make more than one word. The first we're going to look at is M, which means mother. You might be familiar with the form ima, which really is more like mommy. Genesis 3.20 And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. The word Eve in Hebrew is chava, and it's related to the word for living, chaya. He didn't call her Eve because she was born at night. Just gives you a clue about maybe what language God is speaking to the people. Exodus 20, verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Jehovah thy God has given thee. Two other small translations in Deuteronomy 22, 6, If a bird's nest chance to be before thee in the way of any tree, or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam, that's the female of the bird, Sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dam with the young, the mother with the babies. Another translation, Ezekiel 21, 21. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways, to use divination. He made his arrows bright. He consulted with images. He looked in the liver. An old form of divination is to cut open an animal and read the internal parts. Why is this like the mother, the parting of the way? Maybe it's the mother road, it's the main road, and then it's splitting up into uh, a family. Another word spelled with these two letters, Aleph Mem Safit, has a different vowel. It's pronounced Im, and it means if. Now I want to show you this little piece from the Blue Letter Bible. If you pull up this word by its number, you're going to see that there's a King James Version translation count of 43. This just means that of all the times that the word if is in the text as the word im, there are only 43 of these times where the Strong's number is going to be shown with the word im. If you look further down, it says Strong's number 518 matches Hebrew im, which occurs over a thousand times. But when you pull this up in the Strong's, most of those are not going to show you the connection to the Strong's number 518. I'm not sure why that is, but it happens very frequently in these small words. So just looking at this, in Genesis 4-7, there's an if, and the number is there. Thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. We'll talk about this ver verse in a minute. But as another example, you see in Genesis 13, 9, Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If that will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou dost part to the right hand, then I will go to the left. I put the Hebrew up there. I've highlighted. The im is there twice. But as you can see in the English, it does not refer back to the Strong's number. So I said this is common. We're going to see another example of this in a minute. Uh, it's common with very small words. So going back to Genesis 4-7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. 
Yehovah is talking to Cain after his failure. In Deuteronomy 28.1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yehovah thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yehovah thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So the idea of a mother is connected to the idea of if in the sense of dependence. It depends on what happens. Just as a child depends on its mother for nurturing in the early years, for feeding, for early education, what the results of your actions depend on, what are the conditions. If you hearken diligently, then God will bring you these blessings. If we add a hey, we have this word amma, which means slave woman, bond woman. Genesis 21.10, Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And in Exodus 2.5, And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Again, somebody has to depend on this person. Another meaning for Amma is the measure of a cubit. Genesis 6:16. 6, a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. I think we have a better idea of the connection by this translation in Isaiah 6, 4. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So amma, amot can also be posts, and they are things that are going to hold something up. They are measured in cubits, but the rest of the building is going to depend on them. Now I want to cover a word which is easily confused, because ayin, as you remember, is also a silent letter, and the word im with an ayin means with. Again, another small word. Im with an aleph is if. Im with an ayin is with. Now, maybe you know this word, imanuel. Im is the with. The anu part is us, and el is el. So we say his name was Emmanuel, God with us. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. In a different translation, Psalm 72, 5. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout their generations. In other words, we don't, we don't fear with the sun and moon. We're not fearing the sun and the moon. But this is the preposition that is used in this case. Prepositions in other languages are very tricky. They are specific to verbs, and they don't translate well from language to language. Another word to mix into the confusion with ayin mem is am, and that means a people group or a nation. Genesis 11.6 And Yehovah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do, speaking of the tower at Bavel. Hosea 2.23 And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy, and I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. Hosea talking of the nation of Israel. Now you might be familiar with another word, which is people, which is a nation or a people group, which is goy. And so they're pretty much miscellaneously translated interchangeably. We see this verse from Deuteronomy 4, 6. Keep therefore and do them, the laws of Jehovah. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, of the Amim, as you see below. 
which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation, um, is wise and understanding people, goy. So sometimes, and I talked about this uh, in another video about who are the Gentiles, goy can refer to the people of God. So here's an interesting word with both the regular mem and the final mem. This word is mayim, and it means water. It's always in the dual, not just the plural, but in the dual. That's another story. Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Also a verse you might be familiar with, Isaiah 12-3. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Now, I've always thought that this was interesting. I don't know that it has any meaning. But the chemical formula for water is H2O. There's two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen. And here we have two mems and one yud. So here is your memory verse from Proverbs 25, 21. I will read it slowly. Then I will read it again, translating word by word, and then I will read it again slowly in context. Im ra'ev sona'acha ha'achilehu lachem ve'im tzame hashkehu mayim. Im, if, ra'ev, hungry, sona'acha, the one who hates you, Ha'achilehu, feed him, lachem, bread. Ve'im, if, tzameh, he is thirsty. Hashkehu, give him something to drink. What? Mayim, water. Im ra'ev, sona'acha, ha'achilehu, lachem. Ve'im, tzameh, hashkehu, mayim. So now that you have the Aleph, you have the Aleph and the Tav. As you might know, when Yeshua refers to himself as the Alpha and the Omega, he is referring to himself as the Aleph and Tav. Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter. Aleph is the first in the Hebrew. Tav is the last. And I have a long series of teachings. I will put the link below. And you can see there are many, many meanings for Aleph Tav, maybe more than you've heard about. So I just recommend you have enough letters now, you can understand those videos. We are catching up to the end of the alphabet. Until next time, Tasimit Ha'inayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.